Welcome to Refuge Reflections. In this podcast series, we will explore a variety of topics and shorter sermon series exclusive to Refuge Online Podcast. Our desire at Refuge is to provide you the resources to help you grow closer to Christ while equipping you to take the gospel with you everywhere you go. For more information, please visit us on the web at www.refugeph.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Refuge Reflections podcast. This week we're doing a new installment to the Advocate series about obedience. We're going to be looking at the idea of obedience and how it applies to our lives as followers of Christ. But before we dive into obedience, I want to first talk about love. The reason being because love and obedience are intertwined, they're interconnected with each other. And I want to first define love for you because it is in love that we find our foundation for obedience. So what would you call love? We know the feeling, but sometimes it's hard to put into words. We could define love as an intense feeling of deep affection for someone or something. But when we're talking about biblical love, we need to look at the term agape love. Agape meaning the selfless, sacrificial, unconditional love of Christ. The highest form of love. The form of love that God has For man. So let's break down these three attributes of Christ's love that we should model. Selfless, meaning concerned more for others than yourself. Sacrificial, meaning to surrender as an offering to something greater than yourself. And finally, unconditional, meaning never ending and cannot be taken away. And of course, we cannot talk about love without looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 4 through 7. This is scripture that is always heard at weddings and different events to describe love. Starting in verse 4, it says this, Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it is not boastful, it is not arrogant, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not irritable, and it does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, and it endures all things. So what we have here in these verses is is a list of what love is not, and a list of what love is. It believes all things, it hopes all things, and it endures all things all things. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth to make sure that they understand what love really is, to make sure that they understand that as we are called to love, all of their spiritual gifts and all of the works that they carry out in the name of Christ are meaningless if not done out of love. The implication of understanding how much God loves us is that we would turn and love others in the exact same way. We can pause and we can reflect back to Christ's words when he gave us the two most important commandments. Love God, love people. God desires for our lives to be a reflection of Christ's love for us, to be a reflection of his love for us. In order for us to be like Christ, we must be obedient to Christ's teaching. We must love God and we must love others. We can go back to our last episode and look at the parable of the talents again, where three servants were given responsibility according to their abilities, and they were tested in their obedience to the master. Two of the servants were obedient to the master, and in return, they shared in the master's joy. There's an element of love here, but the third servant did not love his master. He was afraid of his master. He was afraid of failure, so he disobeyed. He did nothing with the responsibility that the master had given him, and as a result, he was cast away from his master's presence. There was a lack of love and a lack of obedience in this story, and that brings us to our core concept this week. Our core concept is that God desires us to be obedient. God desires us to be obedient. So now let's define obedience. Obedience is compliance or obeying an order, request, or law to submit to the authority of another. That's the part I really want to focus on. Obedience is to submit to the authority of another. The key point in our case is that we are called to submit to the authority of our Creator. We are called to submit ourselves to God. And that leads us right into our core verse this week that comes from 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. This is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commands. Him referring to Christ. We know that we know Christ 
because we keep his commands. We know that we are followers of Jesus because we are following his word. Our lives point to Jesus with our obedient actions that reflect Jesus. Because of Christ's selfless, sacrificial, and unconditional love for us, we are drawn to love him. When we understand the gravity of God's love for man, we love him in return. And our love for Christ is made evident in our obedience. And I want to pause here and talk about one of the big issues that especially new believers struggle with is that idea that if we sin, God hates us. If we sin, God can't use us to bring glory to his name. If we have a past that we aren't proud of, God doesn't want us. And that's not the truth according to Scripture, and we're going to look at that in a minute. But I want you to understand, you might mess up, you might fail, you might fall flat on your face, but what God really wants from us is relentless pursuit. He wants our love. Part of being obedient to God is the act of repentance. We are commanded to repent. This means that when we do fall short, we recognize it, we want to fix it, so we turn back to God in repentance. This isn't a free excuse to sin, because repentance is the act of turning away from something bad and turning towards something good. None of us will succeed in living a perfect life without ever messing up, but we should all continue to drive ourselves closer to Christ. A couple other verses I want to talk about while we're on the subject of love and obedience and repentance are Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We could also look at Galatians 2.16. And yet, because we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we ourselves have believed in Christ Jesus. This was so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of law, because by the works of the law, no human being will be justified. So, a couple things from these verses. Number one, sin equals death. The wages of sin is death. But, if you go back to Romans 6.23, it says, But the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus died for our sins so that we would be forgiven forever when we put our faith in Christ. God doesn't hate you for your sin. He hates the sin, but he loves you. He hates that sin so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son Jesus to buy you back from sin and to give you freedom to live according to God's plan in your life. Number two, Christ's Death equals forgiveness. This is the beauty of the gospel that we, although we may sin and deserve death, we are given eternal life through Christ Jesus. The obedience here in response to this love that while we deserve sin, we're given life because God loved us. The response of obedience is not the thing that saves us. We see this in Galatians. We're not justified by our works of the law. We're justified by faith. But as a result of that relationship with Christ, we're also drawn into obedience. We're drawn out of love. And that leads us to another question. If God forgives sin... Should we still strive to perfect ourselves? Should we still be so concerned about our obedience? Well, the Bible has an answer for that. It comes from Romans 6.1. Paul writes, What should we say then? Should we continue in sin that grace may multiply? Well, the answer is yes. It does matter. Yes, we should strive to perfect ourselves. Why? Because sin draws us away from God. It makes us slaves to this world. This is exactly the point that that we see in 1 John, going back to our core verse for this week. If we go back to verse 1, he writes, My little children, I am writing you these things that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with our Father Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the entire world. 
this text opens that says, I am writing you so that you may not sin. But if you do, know that Christ is your advocate. Christ is your supporter to remind you of God's love that you might seek him all the more over the pleasures of sin. We should strive to be free from sin because sin makes us slaves. And it makes us like everybody else who is cast far from the Father by seeking God by committing ourselves to prayer, to worship, reading the scripture, we fill our hearts so much with so much Christ that there isn't room for anything else. This is the process by which we perfect our faith, what we call sanctification, and by which we become more like Christ. Jesus even says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Remember, always that when you sin, Christ is there to say, I died for that sin. It has been paid for. It has been forgiven. Now come back to me and don't be a slave to that sin anymore. This shouldn't make us feel guilty about our sin, but assured that no matter how great our sin has been or will be, we will always find forgiveness through the act of repentance, through the act of turning back to Christ. And we are empowered all the more to overcome that sin in the future so that it doesn't become a chronic thing in our lives. We may sin once, but we should never try to sin the same sin again. We should strive for obedience in all things, and as a result of our obedience, we'll see Christ all the more play out in our own lives. Choosing obedience over sin is a choice that every person has to make. And this is the message that we saw in that last episode about the parable of the talents. We must choose to be obedient in our pursuit of Christ. And as a result of our obedience, we'll see God multiply his glory through our lives. And just like the obedient servants in that story, as a result, we will share in our master's joy. You will be filled with the joy of Christ. You will be filled with the joy of God's love. And the last piece of scripture I want to leave you with, I I really want you guys to reflect on this over the coming week. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24, it says, Take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness, in righteousness and purity of the truth. I want you to reflect on this verse, study it over the coming week, and and just think about the concepts of love and obedience. Our obedience is a response to God's love. If we're struggling to be obedient to God, it's probably because we're missing a component of love in that relationship. Even as a member of of the leadership team here at Refuge as an online pastor, as a former youth pastor, I fall short in my life. I have failed at times to live up to the gospel. And this is a verse that I come back to, that I turn to whenever I need a reset, whenever I need a reality check in my life. I would encourage you guys to study this scripture and choose today to seek the Father, seek the new life, and ask God to take out all the bad parts of your heart and replace them with His love. Thank you for listening to this message today brought to you by Refuge Church. Please visit our website for more resources as well as our YouTube channel. Just search for Refuge Church in Lenore City, Tennessee to find us. We hope that this message has helped you find hope in Jesus Christ.